Hey guys, I'm Holly, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So pumped to bring you today's video because we're talking about how to run your first half marathon when you're overweight. I have gotten this question a lot recently and I've started working with clients recently who are gearing up for their first half and want to lose weight at the same time. I've decided that the best way to get you guys through that half marathon finish line is to break things into three parts. We're going to start with part one today, arguably the most important. I'm going to get your mind right. To go into a training plan, you're going to need confidence, you're going to need flexibility, and you're going to need to know what to do when low moments come up. Inevitably, in anything challenging, we are going to run into things that feel like problems. I'm going to give you the tools to know what to do in the face of those and not give up. Now I know I'm speaking to a variety of different people when I make this video here. Some of you guys may have put weight on since COVID and never got it off. Some of you guys may have always been in the overweight category and are so sick of feeling this way and lacking confidence. Some of you guys may not be overweight at all, but you're looking for some sort of structure or a challenge to create a daily schedule and stick with it, showing yourself you can complete a goal. Whichever of those categories you fall into or not, you are probably watching this video because you're looking for help. A lot of us say, okay, we're doing this half marathon. We're going to go find a training plan online. We download it. We go to day one, it says, you're gonna go out for 20 minutes, you're gonna use a structure of two minute run, one minute walk to get through that, that'll be your first workout. We go out to do this, we're 30 seconds into the run, maybe 45 if we're lucky, we're forced into a walk right then. We're too tired, we can't breathe. Catch our breath, we walk. Maybe we walk a little bit longer than we were supposed to. Okay, we're gonna try again, we go into that run again. Same thing, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, we're forced into that walk after we run, we're even more tired this time. Third time we try it. Shin hurts, knee hurts, something comes up and you start telling yourself, I am not cut out for this. I am not able to do this. We have all been there and I promise you that. So when you look at this training plan, not only do you have that workout that you're not getting through, you have another one tomorrow, another one the next day, week after week, month after month. How are you going to complete an entire plan of things that you right now don't think you can do? I compare it to at work being forced into five consecutive meetings with your boss that you weren't giving the topic for beforehand. You don't know what you'll be presenting. You're not prepared, you're not ready. If the training plan is already making you feel this way, that sense of panic, that uneasiness, two things are probably going on. One, you haven't yet addressed your mindset, where you are mentally right now. Number two, you need different workouts to start from. Not necessarily easier, but different. Something that doesn't scare you from even starting. Step one, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna clear out that training calendar. We're gonna ignore the plan for a second. Week one. Do we have a series of workouts in here that we know we can physically complete right now? No question in our mind, we know we can get through it. For a lot of you guys, that might mean four separate 20 minute walks followed by a five minute stretch. Right now, we're gonna clear out any expectations. You don't have to walk a certain speed or on a certain incline for that to count. You don't need to do a certain stretch or be in pain during the stretch for it to count. There's the walk category, there's the stretch category. That's all we care about. That could mean anything. If it's too much to walk for 20 minutes at a time right now, you're gonna start with a two minute walk, as slow as you need to go, followed by a one minute rest where you catch your breath in place. If you're on the treadmill, you can just stop, collect yourself, get back to it until your 20 minutes are up. If you can do the walk, do it at a speed where you know you can breathe and continue moving the whole time. For the stretches, this could be as simple as legs up the wall getting some blood flow out of the feet at the end of the walk. It could be a really light, wide hamstring stretch. It could be something you already know, maybe from years past, maybe a quad stretch that you're familiar with, stretching your calves, just five minutes dedicated to your body and feeling a little bit better and understanding what's going on. What we're not gonna do in that five minutes is judge anything about the walk or anything about what's coming up ahead. We are staying in that moment. This brings me to step two. We are not gonna waste any time fixating on how far we are from where we wanna be. Absolutely pointless mentality, it does nothing. Maybe it motivates you for a second here or there, but overall it gives you a lot of overwhelming disappointment in yourself and makes you feel like shit. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make that promise right now. We're gonna trust that we're watching this video and we're creating mental structure and confidence to get ourselves through a plan, eventually getting through that half marathon finish line. Step three, we're also not gonna fixate on what's happened in the past. We are not going backwards, we're going forward. So even if you've tried 10 different half marathon training plans, maybe one went well for a month, one went well for two months, one went well only for one week, I don't care. It has nothing to do with what we're doing now. 
We can gain weight from a variety of factors, variety of circumstances, some of which very much feel in our control, some feel out of our control. But I think across the board, we can all relate to this one feeling of what I like to call the snowball effect. Starts with one thing going a little bit wrong. Maybe we used to work out or go on a long walk with our friend in the mornings, but now we have to be at work an hour earlier. That pushes our physical activity to the end of the day. Winter comes, it's dark, we find ourselves getting less and less motivated to do it. Say we do make it to that end of the day workout a couple times. Now, the second thing that's gonna go wrong is we don't have as much time as we'd like to cook a healthy dinner. So we go for fast food or we get something more convenient that we know is worse for us, but it's what we can squeeze in then. Enough of these little things happening in a row make it eventually come to this head where you showing up the next day feels like it's not gonna do anything. It feels powerless in the face of everything you have left in terms of progress. It becomes not worth it to continue on. And this is the cycle we all seem to hit and go through, eventually leading to that weight gain. Which brings me here, why you guys are watching this video. We are going to break this cycle right now because we're going to have a plan. In part two of the series I'm doing for you guys, I'm gonna actually give you a training plan to start with, but in this video, we're focused on the psychology. So right now, all I need you to do is trust. You've got a plan this time from the mental aspect as well. We are gonna have tools to use when things inevitably come up. Step four, from this moment forward, you are now an optimist. I'm not talking about in the fluffy way, rainbows and butterflies, everything's gonna be perfect because I say so. I'm talking about being solution oriented. When things inevitably come up, and they will, you are now looking for ways to be flexible, adjust, and move forward. Right here, I'm gonna give you three concrete examples of things that will likely come up and what you're gonna do in the face of them, other than give up altogether. Example number one, I told you guys to go for that 20 minute walk, so you head out to do it. Well, you're 10 minutes in and you feel like absolute shit. Hands on your knees, huffing and puffing, your self-confidence could not be lower, and everything's uncomfortable. You have two options in that moment. One. We know we can throw in the towel, we're really good at that. We can assume that the rest of the workout, the rest of the week and month will feel this way. What's the point in continuing? Or we think to ourselves, what can we do for the remainder of the 20 minutes? Physically, what could we get through right now? And go from there. For some of you guys, it might just be standing in place, eyes closed, focusing on breathing for the remaining 10 minutes. Just being in that moment, pushing on anyway, even if it doesn't look how it was supposed to originally. Who cares what it was originally supposed to look like? The thought in my head always is, did I give it my best effort? Did I do what I could given what I had? Example number two, guys, you wake up in the morning for your workout and guess what? Your right knee is on fire or both quads are really sore. Maybe you got through that 20 minute walk and the five minute stretch yesterday, your body is feeling the effects. It didn't when you went to sleep, but now when you get up and you're stiff, you're feeling that pain. I'm not a doctor, but I'm gonna use this time right now to explain to you guys the difference between injury and soreness. It's very important in the beginning that you know. When we work out, we're doing little micro tears to our muscle fibers. That's what happens, we're breaking it down. When we recover, we sleep, we eat well, we repair those muscle fibers, we come back a little stronger. It's like adding layers to an onion. Over time, we're able to do more for longer. Injury is gonna be more specific. Oftentimes we can remember what happened exactly. We rolled that ankle, we ran into something, we can pinpoint the moment. If when you're in the middle of a workout, the pain is there at the beginning, but halfway through a workout, the pain goes away, you likely are dealing with some residual soreness or something that can definitely be managed whilst continuing your training plan. Obviously, there are different things here going into play, and when we're talking about being overweight, we have to be careful. I get a lot of comments from you guys saying, yes, you wanna push yourself, but you also are dealing with that added weight and everything adds more force, pressure, and exertion to what you're doing. I totally understand that, but you have to be real with yourself and know, am I just leaning into any moment of discomfort to say, oh, that's pain, that's injury, I can't move forward until it feels better. Because let me tell you right now, you cannot build the stamina or endurance without continuing to show up for these workouts, whatever they look like in the beginning, over and over again. We have to build a system and a plan. So don't let it be the hiccup if it's not an actual problem, especially when it relates to just being sore from finally pushing your body in a physical way. Third and final example for you guys, very realistic scenario. Your meeting, last meeting of the day goes over by an hour. You have to be at dinner plans at 7.30. This cuts your workout time from one hour down to 30 minutes. Maybe you were gonna do a one hour run, now you only have 30 minutes. 
Two options here. One, throw the whole thing out. 30 is different than the original plan. Why would we continue forward? We all know that that's going to make tomorrow feel even worse. Enough days in a row of that, we give up entirely. Option two, and this is one of my favorite techniques for making the most out of the time I have. This happens a lot, actually, this scenario for me. Say I was going to go out for an hour and now I have 30 minutes. Or say I had a 30-minute workout and I only have 15 now. What you can do is adjust the level of effort you're going to do that workout at. If you were going to just coast or do your normal routine for the 30 minutes or the hour, nice and medium effort level, that's fine. You wanted to be on your feet for that long and sweat for that long, that's great. Now you have half that amount of time. Can you push it within that time? Can you get that heart rate spiked in an interval style workout? Maybe instead of running for two minutes, walking for one, you run hard for one minute, walk for one minute, or you run hard for one minute, stop and do five squats and then walk. Whatever it is that you can do to up the ante of the workout, knowing it's gonna be half the amount of time, that is gonna give you those results. It's also gonna teach you how to adjust on the fly. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. As I said, guys, moving forward, we are now solution oriented. That means we're embracing change. We're embracing being flexible. When things come up, we make decisions on the fly and we don't think twice. What we're not going to do is judge every single one of those moments and compare, well, this is different from the original thing I thought I was going to do today. That doesn't mean you're worse. It doesn't mean you're losing fitness. You are continuing to push the ball forward. That's what's important. I always say to scale back. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. We can't measure progress by every minute of every day. When we pull back and look at three or four weeks at a time, you have continually pushed the ball forward in whatever way you could. Giving up or waiting till the day is gonna go completely perfectly is absolutely unrealistic. I think we can all agree. And it's why your plan hasn't worked before. All right, in the next part of this series, I'm gonna break down the training plan. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do, starting from ground zero, absolutely no fitness base, getting you all the way through your half marathon finish line. We're gonna cover the run walks, the strength work, how you're gonna take care of your body as it gets a little beat up, and how you're going to eat and hydrate your way through the plan. I'm gonna have modifications in there, give you levels to start from, it's gonna be great. Remember, if you want workouts in the meantime, I'm on Patreon, I've got follow along runs and strength workouts for you in there every single month, links down in the description. Otherwise guys, I challenge you this week, right here, four 20 minute walks with a five minute stretch at the end, sprinkle them through the week how you see fit, comment down below when you finished it, I cannot wait to see how it goes you guys, see you soon.